All right, Sterling McPherson, what are the duties of a manager? Just briefly go over like what a boxing manager is expected to do or what should a boxing manager do? Like what aspects of the boxer do they take care of? Well, uh, the general uh, stands for a manager is to guide his career, to take this fighter, making sure that the, he's in the proper fights. Uh, grow, 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 the growth of a fighter is to take him from stage one to from A to Z and uh, put him in the, that world championship fight. But there's a growth period. There's a growth period where you take him and you start him off and you're picking fights for him. I've always had the belief that uh, if you put your fighter in, if you got a talent and you think he's a real talent, you should be able to put him in 50-50 according to what that fight, the other fighter who you're looking to put him into with, a 50-50 uh, category. If a fighter is 1-0, uh, and o, you're fighting a guy, you could put your guy in with a guy with three or four fights. Even if he's won those fights, you go back to what that kid did, the, the, the opponent has done, and look at his record and say, okay, he fought this guy. But what did the other guys, three guys do? The guy may be 3-0, and o, you understand? But guess what? He fought three different guys who were 0-2, 0-1, 0-3, you understand? They didn't have a win. They did not one of those three guys that he beat had a winning record, okay? Mm -hmm. So what you're looking for when, you, when you're in that stage is now you go back to the most qualified guy out of all three of those guys who he beat. What did they do in the amateurs? Did, a lot of these guys have 65, did they have 75 amateur fights? Were they in the hundreds of amateur fights? Most of them, and I'll bet you when you find out those type of count, town, those type of guys right there, most of them didn't have 15, 20 amateur fights. Mm. Okay, they didn't mm. have the knowledge and they didn't have the growth and the amateur experience to wart them to go forward in the pro, pro ranks. And that's why they, this guy grabbed them and got three quick wins with the guy. So when you're putting your guy in with this particular guy who you think is, oh boy, that guy's got four fights. I want to fight him. I only got, I haven't had my first pro fight yet. Well, there's a madness to that. Okay, so you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta know what you're doing when when you when you're moving you're you're moving a fighter like that as a manager. He's a manager has got probably got to go to various different matchmakers and say, listen, tell me about this guy, right? And he tells you about the guy, and then you make your own decision on what you want to do. What kind of do you want to take this guy or this guy? And the majority of the guys that I've had in, under my auspices when I moved them from four and six round fighters. I've, you know, I've had uh, uh, in, uh, a replicate of nothing more than C and D fighters. And when I say C and D fighters, I'm talking about the bottom of the barrel. I'm not talking about guys that come to the Olympics and win bronze medals and silver medals and gold medals. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the lowest guy there. I get that guy. I've never had the Sugar Ray Leonard's or the Tysons, the guys that come out of the Amazon who are supposed to be somebody in boxing. Mm -hmm. I end up with guys that aren't supposed to be anybody in boxing, and that's where I start from. And it's amazing how our record, and I say our because I've had a lot of help over the years with matchmakers and people helping me guide these guys in the direction they're supposed to be. I give a lot of credit to a lot of different matchmakers who've helped me. We've got Mel Greb and Al Braverman, uh, uh, just a number of different guys who were great matchmakers in years past who knew what they were doing. And Bruce Trampler, you take your lead from guys like Trampler, you look at Trampler's record and what top rank really stands for. Top rank stands for a lot, but the foundation of top rank is built around Bruce Trampler, the matchmaker. If he ain't picking those fights right, and he, there ain't no top rank. Same thing with Don King Production. If Al Braverman ain't making those matches, and he ain't picking the right fighters to fight these different stars that they're thinking are going to be stars, the Chavez's and the Larry Holmes's and the Tyson's and all of these different great fighters, the Trinidad's and all these, they all come from somewhere. And someone helped raise these guys. They didn't just pop up along the scene. Somebody did some dirty work in the streets to make this actually happen. So they had to guide them from A to Z to get to where they are today. So I look at that and say to myself, how do I guide this guy? What, what, how, do, how do I move this guy? But I got to see him fight three or four times. Once I see him fight three or four times, I know where I'm going with this guy. Mm -hmm. Like you take, for instance, Francois Botha. Botha came here from South Africa. He, was, he had a great amateur record. Uh, he uh, had a pretty good professional record. He had 16 or 17 pro fights when I got Botha. 
But yeah. he needed a lot of work. So what I did was I went and got a trainer who was disqualified from boxing at the time, and I put him in the gym with both of them to teach him the techniques and understanding of how a, a fighter should really fight. He, was, he learned the European way in South Africa, and he didn't really understand how he should be fighting over here fighting against these American guys. He was making all kinds of mistakes. So I got that cleaned up a lot, but then it came to who I'm putting him in with, how am I going to carefully move him, but I also moved him in a way that uh, he was 50-50. And, and I believed that if you can't beat these kind of guys, what am I wasting my time for? Okay, mm -hmm. And he did, and he prevailed. He prevailed in a lot of these fights. So that's what you got to have to do. As a manager, you got to understand what and how to move this talent that you got. And you need help to do that. You need expertise, people out there that know what they're talking about and what they're doing. So in moving a fighter in the right and proper uh, direction, he's got to have faith in you as well. He's got to have faith that you, you're you doing the right thing for him, and he's got that faith. I Eddie Futch told me one time, he said, you know, if you don't have no faith in me, well, this ain't going to work. And I said, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Futch. What do you mean by this? He said, you don't have no faith that I'm telling you the right things and moving you in a direction that I think is the most logical direction to move you in. This won't work. He said, what do you feel about this? What's your feelings about this? I said, you know what, Mr. Futch? Every time I enter that ring at the Silver Slipper or Caesar's Palace and you walk up those steps, I don't think there's one guy in, in this country or any country that can beat me in a four or six round fight. I was a four or six round fighter at the time. And I said, there ain't one fighter that I'm in fear of. I don't care. I don't care who you pick. It don't make a bit of difference to me because I trusted in him. And mm. that trust is the biggest thing I think that's going to guide a fighter in the right direction because it's that trust that gives you that confidence. And that confidence prevails you to win these fights. A fighter, a promoter, manager ain't going to fight for you. You got to fight. So you got to have that confidence and you got to have that trust. Mm. Okay, okay.